Well, hello there. Welcome to Red Roof Family Farm. I'm Serena. You might know me already, but if not, we are in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. It is a uh, zone five here. It is a beautiful day out, but normally it is a snowy cold winter. And here in January on the farm, we don't have as much food as we like to have, but there is still lots. And I will show you what we have been eating. All right, campiness over. One of the most common questions we get asked, which we do not address ever in videos, is what do we eat? What do we do with all of our food? What do we have for food in storage? What do we can? What do we freeze? All of that. And so we are going to finally answer these questions. We are starting now in January, but we're gonna do an entire year of this. So stay tuned for the abundance of summer because January is very sad. As you can see behind me, the farm, not really growing anything, but there's still been a few picks that we've been able to do out here. You know, there's still a little bit of kale limping along so we can get a little bit of greens. We had a huge windstorm that came through the valley the other night and it whipped off my low tunnel cover and surprise, I had an amazing abundance of Swiss chard growing under here. Um, and I had needed to pick it because uh, with the tunnel off, it was gonna start to get a uh, little bit sad from the cold. So I came out here, we did a massive, massive pick and we've been eating some fried Swiss chard in butter and garlic. It's so delicious and such a treat at this time of the year when we don't really have any other fresh greens. But it's been really amazing what has still survived under this tunnel. I didn't even know anything was growing. The Swiss chard that we have here was actually planted to sell in the fall. The Swiss chard isn't as cold hardy as our kales, so it usually doesn't survive to this time of year. We've been having a beautiful winter so far, so I've been really happy to be able to snack on this. Fresh greens are really hard for us here in the winter because it's just too cold. Even the kale, like what I showed you earlier, that's something that's kind of there for March to produce for us. We kind of have to be very dependent on the food that we've stored. So I'm gonna show you guys that next. Life on the farm this year was so busy that we didn't really have much time to think about getting root crops in storage for ourselves over the fall. But luckily we had market leftovers that got left in our garage. And here we are three months later. <laughs> the, the food that we just left to get dealt with in the future is still perfect for us to eat. This cool garage doesn't freeze, but it's a, it's not as warm as in the house. So you can see some of, some of these carrots have started to sprout, um, but there's still lots of crunch, lots of flavor. These are infinitely better than anything we could buy at the grocery store. And you know, a full tub of them is more than enough to get us, you know, back into spring, spring greens again. So I'm very happy to have these to snack on. I'm always amazed at what I can salvage out of our neglect. This here is the ultimate neglect. This is our potatoes. You are supposed to do some work when trying to store your potatoes for, uh, for long term. Um, I obviously did not. But you know what? This, these potatoes still taste amazing. Yeah, they have all these sprouts, but we just pop them off. You know, some of them are a little, a little sad. Give them a peel. They're as good as new and they're still so, so flavorful. My children love potatoes. So we've been feeding them lots. We've been doing mashed potatoes. We've been doing like little oven fries. We're Canadian. So there's been some poutine in our lives. Um, I'm very glad to have found this sad bucket of potatoes hidden under piles of things in my garage. Before the frost came, we went out and we salvaged whatever we could find around the farm. And one of the things was this strange mystery squash that was growing in our compost pile. And as you can see, there was a lot of it. 
Unfortunately, this is actually a gourd squash hybrid, um, so it's not super edible. But they've been sitting out here, and every once in a while, when we have the physical strength to crack one of these open, we've been taking them out and giving them as a treat to our chickens. So there's, there's food, not just for us, but also for the chickens hiding away out here. Luckily though, it wasn't only gourds that were growing mystery style in the farm. We also have some random spaghetti squashes and a few other, you know, winter squash type things stored away. And these are a lovely snack to have over the winter. At this point, we are not selling anything, not even garlic. We've had some people ask us if they can still buy garlic from us. And we do have some left over, you know, there's a few bins, but this is for us. This is the garlic that we will be eating over the next couple months until we get back into, you know, fresh green garlic times again. But the majority of our stored and preserved food is actually in here. Now that we are farmers, <laughs> we have zero time ever, which means that I can't do the canning that I used to do. So we utilize having this deep freeze a lot. When we have leftovers from the farmer's market that we like to eat, we throw it in here during the summer so that we have an abundance of food over the winter. Okay, let's talk about food. Oh, the squid. My children love fruit. So I make sure during the season to freeze up a bunch of fruit whenever I can. Um, strawberries are a huge favorite of my children. It's the reason why I have a thousand plants, but I don't sell strawberries at the farmer's market. Uh, they will eat them all. <laughs> so I always try to hoard a bunch and especially out in this chest freezer where they can't go and help themselves to it. Uh, we also have a couple apricot trees. I make sure to pit and freeze up apricots and we feed our children a lot of smoothies over this time of the year. It's a great way for me to hide hide vegetables. I throw carrots and I throw leftovers in there. Um, and then it's it's a nice way to use this frozen fruit. That's a treat for the children. There's lots of good stuff in here. I know there's my personal favorite fruit is nectarines. I buy nectarines by the crate because we buy so much and we eat a lot, but a few always get fully ripe before we can eat them. So whenever that happens, I chop them up and I get them in the freezer because this time of year, they are such a treat to have. I also freeze up a bunch of veggies. I have some broccoli. We grew a row of broccoli that was mostly for us. And so it's nice to be able to still have some of that over the winter. And then I have so much of this in the freezer. This is chopped up zucchini. And normally what we do when we freeze zucchini is we, we shred it, we grate it, and then we freeze it. And then we throw it into pasta sauces because Ian and I are tomato-based life forms, so you know we eat pasta sauce every other day. Um, but this year I did these chunks because it was a lot faster for me to process it. And these have actually been defrosting and frying up really nicely. So I've been really happy with you know, preserving them like this. We also grew green peppers on the farm for the first time and we were amazed by how many peppers they actually produced. So we sold a lot, but we always had leftovers. And so I chopped some to have in the freezer to be able to use over the course of the year. So I still have, you know, bags and bags of these too. We can eat so many vegetables just out of what's in this one freezer. One of our other favorite things to have in the freezer at this time of year is baba ganoush. We grow a lot of eggplants because we love eggplant and this is our favorite way to eat it. I freeze it into jars and disclaimer, this is dangerous, be very careful, don't necessarily do this. Um, but what we do is we take it out and pop it in the microwave and warm it up in the jar and it's just it's such a great snack when yeah, it brings us back to those the summer days of the heat and, and buckets and buckets full of eggplants. So we usually have, you know, 20, 20, 30 jars of this to get us through until August again. Ian and I are obsessed with tomatoes. So we preserve a lot of tomatoes. And this is my newest discovery. This works incredibly well. And you all need to know about this. How I freeze tomatoes is I throw them into the freezer doing nothing to them. And what this actually does is the skins of the tomatoes 
work to seal in and keep the frozen tomatoes fresh. So I have been eating year old, unbagged, unblanched, un anything tomatoes, and they are amazing. They're not freezer burnt at all. Um, and then when we go to eat these, we fill a container full of the frozen tomatoes and we pop them into our microwave and defrost them. And then once they're defrosted, the skins just slide right off and we use the defrosted tomato flesh. It's working really good and it's also helping to limit the amount of plastic we use, which is always one of our big goals here on the farm. Okay. And then finally, the way that we preserve cherry tomatoes, because we have a lot of those that get left over after the market, is I chop them in half, I pop them in my dehydrator, I dehydrate them down, and they turn into basically sun-dried tomatoes. Anything that I dry, I like to keep in my freezer because if there's any moisture at all left in it, they can go uh, moldy and then they also can get buggy. So by keeping them in the freezer, I don't have to worry about any of those issues. Um, and then when I go to use these, I add them into hot water, you know, for a couple minutes, strain them out, and then they're soft and pliable like a sun-dried tomato and with that super rich, deep tomato flavor, they add a huge amount of flavor at this time of year when you know we don't have those rich summer fresh flavors there's a lot of food in there <laughs> didn't know didn't know i've been hoarding oh. it down here i come and check it out sometimes when you're sad mm -hmm. when you're sad in miss summer i come and look at tomatoes <laughs> longingly <laughs> Lady. Stealing your eggs, ladies. Though the farm isn't producing the abundance like what we had in the summer, uh, one thing that has not slowed down at all is these chickens and their eggs. We are drowning in eggs. I was I was told the chickens stopped laying in the winter, um, and I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed because we have no plans for selling these over the winter, and now every day we have two dozen eggs to eat, and we just cannot keep up. We like to eat quiches, we like to do poached eggs, there's lots of ways that we eat eggs, but two dozen eggs a day is very, very difficult to go through. In the house right now, we have some other crops that I have been working on eating our way through. We grew onions this year and we pulled them out and we set them aside. And so we have lots and lots left and they're still, they're still lasting really well. These red onions haven't, you know, had any sort of sprouting. And then I've also been working on peeling up a bunch of garlic to then chop up and have ready for us to use. Uh, I chop it in our food processor and then I have about a cup, <laughs> a cup sized jar filled with minced garlic, which makes it really easy because we, we often put, you know, three cloves of garlic in our recipes. So it's, it's easier to process a lot and then use it for the next couple weeks. If you've seen any of my seed shopping or uh, flower shopping videos, you might know that I have a little bit of a thing for bulk. <laughs> and that also is a problem in my food. When, when I go and I buy stuff, I buy stuff in bulk and then we slowly use through it. So downstairs we have this basement room and in here this is, you know, our pantry. This is where we store all of our bulk food and it's also where we store the food that I can. Um, because we're so busy on the farm, um, it's, there's just no time for me to really can the way that I used to. Um, but there are some things that I just love so much and you can't get them anywhere else. So I, you know, I break off a chunk of time. I make it a priority to make it happen. One of those things is cowboy candy. We absolutely love uh, sweet pickled hot peppers. These, you know, we've done it with like a, depending on what, what peppers are available fresh in the farm at the time, you know, the color is kind of different, but it's the same idea, sweet, pickled, spicy. This is 
I don't do relish, but I put this on pretty much everything that I can think of. I love this stuff. So I make sure to, you know, make a couple, a couple batches, have about 20 jars for the year down here. We don't eat very many pickles, so I don't make very many pickles, but I did do up some pickled garlic scapes this year. Um, garlic scapes are a treat, so, you know, it's, it's nice to have this to pull out to, you know, have for parties and things like that. And then the one thing that we eat a ton of is this apple and green tomato chutney. Uh, Ian and I actually had one of our biggest fights in our entire relationship over a half empty jar of this chutney. So my trick to marital bliss is I make sure to always keep lots of this so we never have to fight about it. At this time of the year, over the winter, we don't have too much going on. So this is the time when I could can um, if, if I wanted. So I usually try to go through and do up a few jars of the tomatoes. I take those frozen tomatoes out of the freezer and I process it down into like, you know, just a plain tomato sauce. This one's a little thin, but it's a tomato sauce. And then I have it to quickly open up. So then I don't have to worry about defrosting the tomatoes in the freezer if I want to make like a 10 minute dinner. So I, I usually do a couple batches of this. And then my daughter, she loves applesauce. So I do up a couple flats of applesauce for her. This is really nice to have <laughs> for breakfasts for her come, you know, spring, summer when it's just crazy, knowing that we can pop one of these open, you know, microwave it, heat it up for her, and she's gonna be happy. You know, it's worth the little bit of time I give to it at this time of year when I don't have other food going on. Okay, I gotta show this off to you guys because I'm super excited about this and no one actually cares. So I'm using this entire video basically as an excuse to show you what I made. We had so much garlic. We were drowning in garlic this year. We grew way more than we needed for our market. Um, so I wanted to preserve some garlic that would be shelf stable for a couple years. And so what I did was I made garlic salt. I did 50% garlic, 50% salt, and chopped it up in a food processor, and then I dried it in my dehydrator, but I also did a few different flavors. So what I have here, this is, I call this green salt but it has herbs, it has green onions, garlic, salt. Um, this is, you know, we've basically been using this as a seasoning salt. It goes in everything except for baking. Um, and then this one, I'm so excited about this one. I grew a ton of habaneros. We do not like super spicy food, so I had zero use for habaneros, but I could throw them in to this garlic salt, and now this salt is a little bit spicy, but it's salt, right? Like how much do you put on it? So this is a garlic habanero salt. So it gives a little bit of a kick with that rich, rich garlic flavor. This is very, very good. And then finally to have, you know, something a little bit different, this is pesto salt. So I had a lot of basil left over. So I chopped up basil, garlic, and salt. And so this has those, you know, Italian pesto flavors in it as a salt. So, you know, I got a couple of years of beautiful flavored salts, uh, gifts for Christmas, things like this. I'm, I'm very excited about this, but I also, I can't do it next year because I now have buckets and buckets of salts. <laughs> oh, coming out of my creepy basement. <laughs> we are all about local sustainable food, either growing it or buying it from a farm. But growing local sustainable food isn't, isn't really useful unless you're eating local sustainable food. When you first start gardening, it feels like there's so much food in the season and then there's not really anything to eat outside of, you know, July and August. But, you know, with our 17 years experience, we've learned some cycles and some systems that has worked really well for us to be able to eat fresh from the garden or, you know, preserved from the garden across the entire year. So I hope with, you know, starting in January when a lot of people don't really think 
of garden fresh food as being an option and taking you through you know all the months of the year and show you just how what we eat changes as we keep eating what is currently in season um, the little efforts that we make across the year to be able to have food at this specific time when you know it's not necessarily fresh outside and just what we do with it how how we eat it so this isn't necessarily going to be recipes because I am a bad cook <laughs> um, but I will share one recipe um, to inspire you guys for some of the stuff that we do and I'll throw out ideas and you know just seeing the food might help you think about how you can eat it yourself so because in January this year we are drowning in eggs we are definitely gonna have to make something with eggs we have all these eggs and my children don't really like eating eggs. Leah's here <laughs> to support this fact. So I'm always looking for recipes that use eggs that my kids like to use up a few more eggs. So we have been making the Smitten Kitchen Chocolate Dutch Baby as a treat, as an after school treat for them. I'm gonna make one up, it uses four eggs. So it's a good recipe. And while it's baking, I'm also gonna do up a batch of eggnog. My children love eggnog, but here it's only sold in the grocery stores over Christmas. And Leah also doesn't really like it with a lot of nutmeg. So what I do instead is I make a vanilla eggnog that is adapted to exactly how my children like it. It's a treat for them, um, but it's it's basically just milk and eggs, so it's, it's something I'm happy to feed to them. So let's get to it. I love the Dutch baby recipe because it's very, very simple. Uh, you quickly blend everything up in a blender, throw it into a pan, into the oven, and it's, it's basically a pancake. It's not unhealthy, so it feels like a treat while also being something I'm happy to feed my kids. Um, but yeah, the cleanup and making it's really fast. I don't make it every day, it's a treat. I'm gonna share the recipes down below. I follow the Smitten Kitchen recipe exactly. Um, the eggnog recipe, I barely follow it. <laughs> um, so it's just there for reference. I make it with not cream. I make it with just milk or sometimes I use uh, like a light cream. Um, I use way less sugar and I also do not use nutmeg. I just use a bunch of vanilla. So recipe for reference. <laughs>
This seems like just, you know, one of those professional cooking shows. I know. 